Welcome to the program. I'm Ali Moore. The revelations that a 10-year-old Aboriginal girl had been pack-raped in the Arakoon community of far north Queensland and that the nine male perpetrators all avoided jail sent shockwaves not only around Australia but around the world. The Queensland Government, its Justice Department and Department of Child Safety all faced trenchant criticism for their handling of juvenile justice and child safety, criticism they rejected. But tonight, for the first time in an exclusive interview, a former employee of the Department of Child Safety claims the young girl was sent into harm's way by the very department that was supposed to protect her. David Morgan reports. By the time a young person was four years old in Arakoon, they would witnessed everything from sexual abuse, murder, uh, rape and the rest of it. Don Green has been a youth worker for 20 years. He was employed by the Queensland Department of Child Safety as a child safety officer, stationed at the troubled Aboriginal settlement of Arakoon in far north Queensland. He was there in May 2006 when a 10-year-old girl we'll call Alison was pack-raped by nine males. So I was working with a young girl and um, I spent a lot of time with the family, particularly after the incident. Um, they were pretty shattered. Um, still are. Tonight, outrage over the sentences for nine males who raped a ten-year-old girl. Don's story goes some way in explaining how this could happen, explaining the failure of government to protect vulnerable children. To be honest with you, I hold what I call a flawed culture in the Department of Child Safety responsible. They strike me as people with no morals, no ethics and are only there for careers and, and not for a concern about the people who they're taxpayer funded to serve. The way I ended up feeling was that uh, you're just like a token black fella sent to this community so that these people could say we've got a fella on the ground there if questions are asked but without any intention of ever doing anything. And it didn't even matter if he wasn't a real black fella. Here's what he was told by a senior officer of the Queensland Department of Child Safety before he took up the position in Arakoon. By the way, if anybody asks you, um, tell them that you're an Aboriginal. And Dada says, why? And she says, well, its position should really be an identified position, it should really be given to an Indigenous person. I told her straight that I wouldn't do that. But perhaps Don Green, who is of Maori descent, was never meant to succeed. I never received any training whatsoever. In fact, I was in the community for two months before I had even cited a Child Safety Act. He also says all the program and service delivery plans he prepared were simply ignored and makes this astonishing claim. There was not one client there who had a case plan and as far back in the records that I looked, and I looked quite far back, there would never been any. Talk to any child safety or welfare officer and they'll tell you that any child subject to a protection order must have a management plan, a plan that guarantees their well-being and their safety. No plan, no care, no safety. I got so angry, got upset that this shouldn't have happened. Those animals, they should have been locked up in a cage. Alison had exhibited all the behaviours of someone who had been sexually abused from a young age. She's um, got a host of behavioural disorders, absolutely. Um, amazing young girl, they've got a real soft spot for her, but um, yeah, she's a handful. At age five or six, she'd already contracted gonorrhea. She'd been removed from the community and placed in the care of a foster family in Cairns. She was going really well. In fact, when I first saw her turn up in Erica, and I was quite astounded how well she looked. But all that was to be wasted. Alison had come back to the settlement to attend the funerals of elders and family members. It was supposed to be just a short stay with her grandmother, but the department's experts had other ideas. And then I was also asked to take the information back to the grandmother and ask if the grandmother would be happy for her to stay there on a permanent basis. A grandmother, all the family members and, and the primal elder of that family were all pretty adamant no. 
And the grandmother herself said, I just couldn't handle her, you know, and uh, they knew things would go wrong, so that was a pretty emphatic no. The advice was totally ignored. Over six weeks, Alison was repeatedly sexually assaulted till finally, in May 2006, she was pack-raped by nine males, six juveniles and three adults. How often did your superiors ignore your advice on the ground, ignore the advice of the elders of the community, indeed ignore the advice of the families of some of these children? Continually. I can't think of an occasion where it wasn't. It seems that the bureaucrats were in part driven by a politically correct notion that children at risk should be returned to their communities. Take the case of an eight-year-old girl abuse victim who was also sent back to Arakoon. And when I arrived at that dwelling, there was a young man whom I knew very well. He worked with extensively and he, um, he was a sexual offender. So what happened? I rang, advised of the situation and advised that I didn't think that it was appropriate that this young girl in particular be put into this dwelling for any length of time. Um, I also wrote in hard copy that view. It was totally ignored. And um, from what I've been told by the family and the carer in the Cairns area, that she got sexual abuse twice in that stay. On another occasion, a police officer gave Don Green a written notification of their suspicions of neglect and abuse involving a young boy. So I, I handed that in and the team leader looked at it, tore it up with the response of saying, we can't be investigating every child that the Arakan police have concerns about. But Don Green believes it was not only a case of bad policy, but was also driven by a determination to reduce the number of children on protection orders, a way of cleansing the books, a deliberate cover-up. Well, they're embarrassing to child safety. I mean, um, the number of young people on order, when you look at it on a per capita basis, was just outrageous. Um, I was told that it was also the fact that elections were coming up. Um, it was not a good look and they wanted to get it tidied up. In another place at another time, Don Green did get the stats down. He helped lower the juvenile repeat offender rate in one community to zero. And I was called in and reprimanded and reminded that um, stats, uh, funding was statistically driven and it was wrong for me to have got the reoffending rate down. Mm. And that seems to be the culture of that, those organisations. And it, it, I find it evil. And I think the taxpayer needs to know. It would seem the care of children has been lost in bureaucratic games. And there are a group of primal elders there that have the solutions, but people aren't listening to them and people aren't helping them. Don Green was so upset, he quit the Queensland Department of Child Safety. I don't care because this is bigger than me. I owe it to those people. I owe it to that community and I owe it to that family. I, I've seen the tears that these people cry and I feel them. It tears me apart and I had to speak up. The Queensland Minister for Child Safety, Margaret Keach, and her department have refused a number of requests for interviews. In a statement issued to the 7.30 report late today, the department's director, Narelle Deeth, acknowledges Don Green's allegations are extremely serious and suggests he takes them to Queensland's Criminal Justice Commission. The director also says an investigation into the case made 157 recommendations which have led to a major overhaul of the department's processes and service delivery to every Indigenous community in Cape York. David Margan with that report. Uh, I'm the show I'm just like to uh, inquire on you. Uh, just, uh, just before uh, Federal Parliament rose, uh, Senator Violent Joyce tried to table the Volk report in the Senate. Uh, because he's not a Minister of the Crown, that was unable to happen because I think a Senator Campbell uh, uh, decided it should not be tabled. Uh, as I state, 
liberal. Uh, do you think you could possibly t uh, lobby your federal colleagues if Parliament uh, does sit on Monday to mm -hmm. allow Senator Joyce to table that uh, 3,600 page draft report in the Senate? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If Parliament does sit, I will certainly uh, lobby them. I think it should have been. Uh, <laughs>